Tom Brady and the Buccaneers beat the Patriots on Sunday night, but they did not cover the six and a half to seven point spread out in Foxborough. Both teams had to deal with a rain soaked game in Gillette Stadium. The champs improved to three and one. Bill Belichick's team dropped to one and three. Nick Folk had a chance to win the game late with a 56 yarder that hit the left upright. Let's take a look at the picks recap for one super friend, John Breach. It was a tough week, no doubt about it. 0 and 5. Overall, that did hurt, but he's still 6 and 9 against the spread. 9 and 6 straight up. We're never going to talk about week four ever again. A chance to get back here in week five and get back on it. John Breach joining us here on CBS Sports HQ. Let's first start with the Patriots. You're back on the horse here at Houston, laying the nine. Are you taking the points or you're grabbing the points? Which way are you going here? Tommy, I don't ever know why I doubted Bell Belichick. That was my first problem. I am not going to do that this week, especially because he is coaching against a rookie quarterback. We know Belichick is a defensive mastermind. He had Tom Brady confused plenty of times in week four. And you know who he confuses the most? Rookie quarterbacks in his past 11 games against rookie QBs. He is 10 and 1. And you know what? That includes thrashing Justin Herbert last year in the Chargers 45 to nothing. Uh, he already covered once against a rookie quarterback earlier this year. That was Zach Wilson and the Jets. The Patriots won by 19. Uh, so there's no way I'm betting against Belichick here. I love the Patriots who are facing uh, Davis Mills and the Texans. And I think the Patriots win big here and by double digits and cover. All right, so lay the nine there. Get it maybe perhaps she gets to nine and a half or ten, depending on how the uh, betting market responds to that. There's a couple of NFC West matchups. Uh, we're focusing on one Thursday night, though. So you got the Rams road favorites at Seattle, the Pacific Northwest. Rams favored by one and a half. Taking it there, or are you taking the Hawks? Yeah, this is an interesting one. I don't usually love picking Thursday games because you never know how a team's going to respond off of three days rest. But look, the Rams always come ready to play on Thursdays. Under Sean McVay, they played four times. Uh, they're three and one. That one loss was by one point. And in those four games, they've averaged 33 points per game. So they always come just absolutely ready to play. Also, last year, McVay and the Rams went five and one after a loss so i look for them to rebound the one thing i will say is i hate picking against russell wilson and the seahawks in a home primetime game but i just think the rams are the better team here uh their defensive line usually gives wilson fits so i'm going to take the rams to win and cover here okay you think sean McVay and company bounce back next game philly catching four points to carolina what's the play yeah, this is an interesting game. The point spread I thought was a little bit surprising just because Carolina was so dominant through the first three weeks and then kind of fell flat on their face against the Cowboys. I think the Panthers are just kind of caught off guard by the fact they faced an offense that was so good they didn't see through the first three weeks of the season. Uh, but if we did learn one thing about that defense, they can stop the run. They can stop the pass when they're playing quarterbacks who are not as experienced as Dak Prescott, and that's what the Eagles will be throwing out there. Uh, you know, Jalen Hurts has played well through the first four weeks, but I think he is going to struggle against this Panthers defense. I think Carolina is going to get back on the winning track. Uh, I think they win this by six or seven points, and they cover that four-point spread uh, pretty comfortably. All right, three favorites for three so far. Next up, Giants at the Cowboys. Interesting line here, divisional game, but the Cowboys laying the seven, John. Too many points, not enough, or just right? I, this is a Jason Garrett revenge game. We spent all week talking about Tom Brady. Let's talk about Garrett. Uh, but, you know, it's not that big of a story because he played them last year. And also, I don't think he's going to get revenge. Look, the Dallas Cowboys are the only team in the NFL right now that is still unbeaten against the spread. And until that changes, I am not going to bet against that. What we've seen from Dallas on both sides of the ball this year has been pretty remarkable. Dak Prescott obviously looks fully healthy. The offense is running on all cylinders. And then the biggest surprise is how well the defense has played through the first four weeks. I know Daniel Jones has been pretty hot over the past few weeks. Uh, I think he's one of only two quarterbacks with four straight games of the QB rating over 90. Uh, but I think he is going to struggle against Dallas. And, you know, the Cowboys have been scoring in the 30s. I think they get up there and win this by more than a touchdown. So I think they cover. All right. And lastly, Buffalo at KC rematch of the AFC title game. What do you like? This is a fascinating game because Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs have kind of had their way with the Bills, especially last year we saw the AFC title game. They beat them in the regular season. Uh, the one thing I'm expecting here is a shootout. I mean, these are two, the two highest scoring teams in the AFC, two of the three highest scoring teams in the NFL. The one thing that worries me 
about Kansas City is their defense. They are giving up the most points in the NFL, or the second most points in the NFL. They've given up the second most yardage. People are just running up and down the field on them. And on the flip side, you have a Bills defense that's given up the fewest points in the NFL. So I know we know both these teams can score. So this basically comes down to how you feel about each team's defense. I like the Bills defense here. So I'm going to ride them to the upset in Kansas City. And you know what, Tommy? Maybe I jump through a, a folding table next week if the Bills win. I don't know, but I am taking Buffalo. Make sure you get that blue shirt so that you can jump on that table. We'll have that on CBS Sports HQ Live. Both, by the way, you and Pete Prisco have concerns about that KC defense. Do you think they can remedy that down the road? I mean, right now it doesn't look like it's anything that's going to be an easy fix. We thought when they got Tyron Matthew back that they would look a little better. That hasn't fixed anything. The problem is that you can just run right through them. And so, you know, if the Chiefs start trying to put more people in the box to stop that, then you throw on them. They just haven't been able to stop anything. And I'm not sure they're going to be able to fix that in the next four or five or six weeks or even this season. All right. Even when Kansas City has been favored, they have been struggling to cover the number against the spread. John Breach, we're going to look for a great week ahead of picks against the spread and straight up, of course, part of the Pick 6 podcast. Super friends Ryan Wilson, Breach, and host Will Brinson on the latest pod. A recap of Monday Night Football. Brandon, again, $5 billion, a lightning delay, and we learned that SoFi Stadium not fully enclosed. I thought you were going to say $5 million is coming our way, but, you know, that's I mean, that SoFi could just drop $5 it, million in a bucket and think we'd be fine. It would only happen yeah. to the Chargers, of course. Why not? Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.